check out first. Today's video is about the Goodwill outlet. Um, I'm going to chat to you guys a little bit about the Goodwill outlet first, and then I'm going to show you some of what I got there. And maybe together we can take a look at whether shopping at the Goodwill outlet is worth it or not. And it's going to be different for everybody depending on what the needs of your business are. So let's get chatting. Um, I'm a part-time reseller. I sell mostly women's clothing on eBay and Poshmark. One of the things I'm working on in my business currently is getting my cost of goods down. The cost of goods is how much you spend on an item. Um, one way I've been working on this is shopping at thrift stores other than the Goodwill because Goodwill's gotten really expensive here where I live in Northern California. I've also been going to yard sales. I've been trying to shop a lot smarter because if I can keep the cost of an item down, the cost of goods, then I make more profit on the other side. The Goodwill outlet. What is it? The Goodwill outlet is different than a regular Goodwill store. Normally, if you go to Goodwill, everything's going to be somewhat organized. Everything's going to be kind of um, hung up on hangers. All the tops are together, all the jeans, all the dresses. At the Goodwill outlet, all the inventory, all the items are just put in giant bins and you dig through the bins and then you pay by the pound, not by the item. So where I live, it's $1.79 a pound. I used to go to the bins a lot. The Goodwill outlet, the dig, the bins, it's all the same thing. I used to go a lot when I was flipping things um, for 10, 12 bucks on eBay and doing a lot of quantity um, in order to make a good profit that way. In my business model currently, I'm working on getting um, more for my items. So buying higher quality items that sell for a little more. I don't sell quite as much as I used to, but I get more profit per item and that's what I'm working on right now. Should you go to the Goodwill outlet in your area? That's a really personal decision and I think it's a business decision we each have to make for ourselves. I'm gonna talk just a little bit for myself, my opinion, yours might be different, um, on some of the pros and cons of shopping at the outlet for me. And then you can take the information and decide what you do with it, okay? So, the Goodwill outlet is not for everybody. The reason why I think it might not be for some people is that it's a lot of work. Standing and digging through items for me physically is harder than just pushing hangers along, moving through hangers. Um, every Goodwill is different, but mine's a little rough, I guess you'd say. It's not as nice a store. Mine's in kind of a warehouse area. There's no windows. There's no bathroom. And you get people from all walks of life. All different types of people there which I kind of like, um, but you may or may not. It can get very dusty in there. Um, it's a little bit more work. Energetically for me, it's just a little harder. Um, so that is something you have to take into consideration for yourself. Sometimes it can be hard to get a cart at the Goodwill outlet. Um, sometimes, like anywhere though, you get people that are a little... Um, a little rough. Some people are like, move out of my way. They're flipping through the, through the clothes. I don't run into that as much at thrift stores. The, the pro of going to the Goodwill outlet, and this is not an exhaustive list by any means. I'm just chatting with you about it. But the pro obviously is that it's inexpensive. $1.79 per pound, depending on what item you put in your cart, I got a huge amount of stuff, which I'm gonna try and um, insert pictures and video into this so you can see what I got. Um, I got a ton of stuff for $88, three huge bags, a few pairs of shoes too. Um, at my Goodwill outlet, shoes are just all thrown in together in a big bin. One of the downsides of that is sometimes the shoes are really dirty and need a lot of cleanup. Sometimes you find one shoe and not the other and that can be really hard. But if you do find a, some shoes, man, they're cheap. You're probably paying $1.79. Some people's um, bins are much cheaper than mine too. Some people it's like 99 cents a pound, $1.39 a pound. I've heard a real range where I am, it's $1.79. It's still cheap. It's cheap. So it's if, 
if you can handle the whole scene of the Goodwill outlet, check it out. I think it's worth checking out. Don't be afraid. Just go in with an open mind. Stay safe. Be smart. But um, go in and check it out and see whether it's right for you. I'm on the fence. I'm going to go through some of my haul items with you guys today. It's definitely going to be two or three hauls because I don't want the video to get too long. Um, I'll show you some tags. I'll talk to you a little bit about why I bought stuff. But not as um, in as much detail as I do in some of my other videos because I have so much stuff. I just don't want to eat up all our time. Check out some of my other videos. I have some other thrift hauls where I really talk more about uh, buying decisions, why I bought it. So you can learn brands, you can learn styles. Um, so feel free to check out some of those other videos. Give this video a like and a thumbs up. That lets me know you like these thrift haul and educational reselling videos. And um, let's get into it. I have so much more I could say about the... Um, Goodwill Outlet, it's such a fascinating place. I have to admit, I'm totally exhausted. I went this morning, I was there about two, two and a half hours. There's something for me energetically about the Goodwill Outlet. It takes more energy for me for some reason. And then physically just pulling through the bins and reaching across bins to get something, I feel tired, so I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I also feel really grateful and fortunate because the bins is 20 minutes from my house. There are some people, I watch their reseller content and the bins is um, two hours. They drive like two hours to go to these buy the found places. So if you have one nearby, uh, my suggestion would be to um, check it out, see if it's for you. So this first item that I found is Athleta. This is actually kind of a really nice piece. This is an Athleta jacket and you'll see here it says LT, which is large tall. This stuff has not been processed yet, you guys. So what I mean by that is it hasn't been washed. It hasn't been steamed. So you're seeing it right out of the bags. It will look better than this once I wash it and steam everything. But this is a nice, it looks like in really good condition, zip up athleta jacket. It feels heavy, really stretchy and amazing. And I'm looking in the body of the jacket for the tag because often, um, yeah, this is Tencel, which is the nicest fabric. Mm, this feels really good. Really good. There's a style number off in Athleta, so um, I can put that style number into Google and find out what the style name of this jacket is. I'm gonna make a pile that's gonna go right in the wash. Athleta does pretty good for me. This is Life is Good, which I always pick up if I see it and it's inexpensive. So for example, like this t-shirt probably weighs six ounces. So I paid less than a dollar for this. Sometimes I'll pay up for these five bucks or something because they can sell in the 20 to $30 range. This is a women's large, so it's a good size. And they always have a theme. This one looks like it's golf or something. This looks like it's in excellent condition. Another thing I'm working on in my business um, is trying to get better at quality control when I'm out sourcing. Sourcing is out shopping for my business. Quality control just means, um, do I have scissors to pop tags when I'm with you guys? Let me check. Um, quality control means I am trying to take a little bit more time, not be impatient and really look at the item and see if it has holes. Is it missing a button? Does the zipper work correctly? Is there a stain? If I can get better at doing that, I'm gonna bring home less flawed items so they don't end up in my death pile, sitting there unlisted, or being donated. This is bar three. I love this. It's just a chunky knit white sweater. It's cropped. Bar three is sold. I'm not, I know it's sold at Macy's. I think it's sold at Nordstrom. So it's a pricey brand. Um, I'll probably list this on eBay. I have both an eBay store and a Poshmark closet. I tend to put items that I'd consider maybe more mature um, on my, in my eBay store. And I put trendier, more styly, younger items on Poshmark in general. There will always be exceptions, but I am I can probably put this on for about $29.99. I'll have to charge shipping on this one because it's quite heavy. This is another brand um, that's sold at those same stores, Nordstrom. This is kind of an athletic -y brand, I believe, Title, Title Nine, And this is a thermal. It's a women's, it looks big, but it's an XL, women's XL. We all have reasons. Hmm. 
sort of a sporty band, just a nice printed thermal. Probably try and get $20 for that. I love $20. This is not your daughter's jeans. Not your daughter's jeans. Um, I used to pick these up all the time and I would pay up for them because they sold so well. My experience currently, it's, it's May 2019 when I'm recording this, is that it doesn't sell as well as it used to. The plus size and larger sizes still sell pretty good for me, you guys. But like these are an, a six petite. I wouldn't buy these at the thrift store unless they were really cheap. But um, this is a Not Your Daughter's Jeans, size 6 petite, and um, they're kind of a crop, a skinny crop, so I thought these would be good for this time of year. I'm still selling a lot of denim, even though it's springtime. These weigh not very much, so I probably paid about a dollar for these. Um, so picking them up the bins, yes, that makes sense. I wasn't sure about this piece, you guys. Um, the reason why is because the brand is Ink, which is nothing special. Ink, I-N-C, International Com Sense. You're going to see it everywhere at the thrift store. Um, it is sold at Macy's, and it can be kind of expensive new, but it doesn't sell really great for me. But the reason I got this one is because um, it's a size 8, and it's 100% linen. And if you've watched any of my other haul videos or videos, you know that I sell a lot of linen in the spring and summer, and I pick up almost anything linen. And I like this because it's a beautiful cobalt blue and it's linen, but it also has these uh, mixed media um, panels and it has the roll tab sleeve. So if on the sleeve you see a little button like this and you can roll it up and there's a hook in there. Um, I like the style of this a lot and the buttons are really pretty, I noticed. So I don't know, I'm thinking 15 or 20 on that because it's not a great brand, but the style, um, somebody I think will really like. Ooh, this is super exciting, actually. You know, this is kind of fun doing this haul for you guys because when I'm at the Goodwill Outlet, it's it's very fast-paced. Um, bins come out, you have to get in there and dig around, and then another bin. Sometimes you're in the middle of digging, doing your thing. Um, you can choose how much you want to be in the fray or not. You can choose to just find a quiet spot by yourself and just dig with your headphones on, or you can be around a lot of people. Um, it's really up to you. The way my Goodwill Outlook works is that they, there's no set schedule, like some people have at their bins, but they will tell everybody, please move away from the clothing side, go to the other side of the room, we're going to wheel out six or eight new bins, and then everybody kind of runs for them. So sometimes you might be in the middle of your groove, slowly searching for things, they announce everybody's got to move, and then you got to kind of quickly find a spot at the new bin and dig through. So it can be kind of fast paced, and so I don't um, even remember a lot of what I got. I mean, it really, for me, it goes by in a blur, but this is a really good brand memorize this tag barefoot dreams and this is the softest ever hoodie really nice blue color I don't think it has flaws I really tried to go through things but I know I will have made a few mistakes Ooh, it looks really good barefoot dreams is known bamboo chick light okay it's it's known for this you'll feel it you'll feel it and be like what is that it's the softest fabric ever and the reason this is so funny is because I did another haul video. One of my last haul videos from 50% off day at Salvation Army was the very first time I ever found Barefoot Dreams personally. I know the brand from watching other YouTube resellers, but I had never found it. And now I found it, I guess that was a week ago or something. So it's like twice in one week. Love when that happens. Um, I, the other piece I found was a bathrobe and when I looked comps, they were like 50 to $70. I don't know what this sweatshirt will go for, but my guess is at least 30 and I'll have to go priority. It's actually really heavy, even though it's small. What is this thing? Okay. I don't, uh, I don't know this brand, the Addison story, but it looked really good. It is a flutter dolman kind of open knit lacy blouse in this great coral color. I'm looking to see if the anthropology tag is in here. If you know, I don't see an anthropology tag. If you know anything about this brand, please leave it in the comments. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll just look it up on eBay and Posh and see what it goes for. It looked like quality and a very interesting style. 
And this was in what I would call a pocket of items. So sometimes when you're at the Goodwill outlet and you're sifting through piles of clothes, you'll kind of get in this almost like a little pocket of really good stuff. And this was towards the very end and I found this pocket of just a bunch of really good women's name brand and style. Some of the brands like this I didn't recognize but I was willing to take a risk on because this was very light, probably cost me about a dollar and it was in with some other good stuff. So um, I'm looking over here to see if I see, oh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna pull some of these you guys because these are a few of the other things that were with that stuff. For example, I don't know this brand either, but this looked so nice. So if you know anything, Balamani, don't know, Balamani, but this is a tissue thin white cotton top, but look at the lace crochet goodness embroidery on this blouse. Um, this will need to be washed and steamed. It's a size small women's. I just thought that was so pretty, so I'm taking a chance on that. Going in the wash pile, and this is the other one that was in there. There were many others, but this looked really good. The basic of the TRF collection. Know anything about it? Really pretty, lightweight purple blouse with lots of detailing. Lots of really beautiful kind of crochet um, detailing. It's almost a smocked front with all this pleating here and it's got pockets. I mean, it's just a really pretty piece. So I need to do a little, I need to look that one up. This is something different. Ooh, I love this. This was something towards the end that I found. This is Athleta and it's a black silky stretchy dress. It's an XL tall, XL T, so that's XL tall. And someone cut the name brand tag out, but I recognize this tag, so it's not a problem. Let me look in the dress, yep. And then you can see, just in case you're unaware, that's the Athleta symbol. Athleta makes high-end yoga and athletic gear. And it will have the style name. This is just kind of a, a black drop waist, drawstring waist. Um, really soft and stretchy dress. I love that. Probably, what will I get for that? I'll probably put up for $29.99 free shipping. This is a brand to know for sure. So I guess I did get up some good stuff, you guys. I would always pay up for this brand. It's Cut Loose. Cut Loose. Um, it might be a login look type brand, that kind of art teacher creative look with lots of linen and layers. And this is size extra small. It's a black tunic top. I just, I sell this as soon as I get it. It's a quick mover in the $20 to $35 range, depending on the size of the piece. The bigger size will do better. But um, I love that brand. I sell it often. I'm going to put most of the stuff in the wash. This is for me. I have a collection of women's kind of vintage antique embroidery pieces. I like to, when I decorate, my table and stuff so if I see these and they're cheap and in decent shape or even if they're not look at this some woman sat and just sewed that all look at the trim so sweet if I see a piece I like and this was probably what like 10 cents or something I'll pick it up for myself this is my number one seller in my eBay store J Jill and this is this I got for many reasons so J. Jill sells, it's probably my number one seller in my eBay store. J. Jill has a lot of different lines. They've got uh, Pure Jill, which is what this is. They've got Love Linen. They just have a lot of different lines. Love Linen does really well for me. The bigger sizes do really well. I'll pick it up, J. Jill, if it's a big size and if it's a current style. It moves really quickly for me in the $20 to $50 range, depending on the piece. I've sold some wide leg linen pants recently. This um, Pure Jill, and then it's got the name here, Pure Jill Ballet Sleeve Tunic. And it's just a long, thin, lightweight, gray top. I'm looking in the tag to see the material, modal and cotton and rayon. It just feels really nice. I don't know why this didn't sell at Goodwill. <clears throat> the reason I think it went to Goodwill is because it's got a little tag. 
Not all these clothes do. Why? Because at the Goodwill outlet, you've got things that were at the Goodwill and did not sell, things that were maybe going to go to the Goodwill store, but maybe they had too much inventory or something, so they just sent it to the outlet. You've got raw donations, which is stuff that people um, donate to the Goodwill, and for some reason they don't bring it right to the store, they just put it right at the outlet. But this one, because it had that pink tag, probably was at the Goodwill. I can't imagine this not selling there, because it's a pretty popular brand, and this feels so nice and amazing. What size are you? Medium. J. Jill, just for your information, runs big. So I'm like a smaller, extra small in J. Jill, and I'm a size women's 10, a curvy 10. Um, so it runs big. I, I've made a choice in my business that I always put measurements in my listings. The reason I do that is because I shop a ton on eBay and Poshmark for myself. So I always put the, the measurements in because I won't buy an item if there's no measurements because brands run in different sizes, styles run in different sizes. Um, I'm a different size in so many different things. So I need to know what the actual measurements are in order to buy stuff. So I won't buy something from a store if it's not, um, if the measurements aren't there. So I just try and do that for my customers too. Not everybody does, that's a personal bus business decision you get to make. The other thing is, and I have to say this the right way because some people I know won't like it is, I, I don't love getting questions from eBay buyers. They have every right to ask a question and I'll do my best to answer, but it really kind of slows things down for me. And since I'm only part-time, I'm often like, I'm not home with my inventory. So if someone says, hey, what size is that J. Jill top? Can you give me the chest measurement? I don't want to have to go back into my inventory, pull it out, measure it in order to answer the question. I want to prevent questions by having as much detail in my listing as I can. So I don't have to, so they can buy confidently and they don't have to ask a question. Just my two cents on it. This is BCBG Max Azria. It's a size large. I don't buy everything in this brand. This isn't like a brand I look for, but they have really cute stuff and I liked this piece. It's a poncho. It's an open weave, kind of a vest poncho in this great color. It's got a hood. I just think somebody's really gonna like that. So I'll put it up there for $29.99. I'm not sure if I'll put that on Posh or eBay. That's a tricky one. This other stuff so far, most of it's gonna go on eBay. eBay is still my, my main gig because I've been doing it long enough. Um, I make most of my sales on eBay. Poshmark, I maybe have 75, 100 listings. I sell maybe two to 10 items a week on there only because I only list two to 10 items a week. I just don't have, as a part-timer, I don't have the time to put a ton into both. So I really love Poshmark. I love shopping on there. I, I love selling on there. But um, being I'm only about 15 hours, 10, 15 hours a week, I have to use my time wisely and I just have to, I sell so much more on eBay. I'm established over there. So I just keep feeding eBay the most. I know if I wanted to sell more on Poshmark, I would have to put more time and energy into Poshmark. This does not have a brand, but it's a cashmere, simple gray scarf. I just thought it was beautiful, and I'm just going to try and sell it. Women's cashmere gray scarf, unbranded. It feels, oh, it's unmistakably cashmere. That's what it feels like. Oh, I got a bunch of men's items today, you guys, at the Goodwill outlet. What's your experience with men selling men's? I sell only a little bit of men's just because I like women's clothes more. I have more fun with women's clothes, so I like taking pictures of them and describing them. I sell men's things pretty well though. When I get it in my store, it seems to sell well. I've, I don't think I've ever even gotten a return from a men's item. So it's easy in that way. And I, t I tend to get pretty good money for men's items. I just don't do a ton of it because I don't know all the men's brands as well. But today for some reason at the outlet, I found a lot more good men's stuff, like athletic stuff, so I picked it up. We'll see how it does, how I do with it. What is this baby? This is a Mountain Hardware. This is another brand that I think used to do better than it does now. It's very expensive stuff. If you go to like REI, this feels so amazing. 
This is their logo-y type thing. I think it's, what is it, like a, a bolt? I don't know what the heck this is, you guys, but it feels amazing. It's a hoodie. It's like a fleece-lined hoodie, but it's a half zip, so if the zipper just goes halfway. I don't even know what the comps are on this stuff anymore, guys. It's a size large. I don't know if you can see how soft and fleecy that is. That's amazing. I'll have to check comps. If I had to guess, I'd say 25 bucks plus shipping. I'll put that on eBay, but I'll check Posh and eBay and see um, how Mountain Hardware is doing. This is a Chico's item. Um, I don't know if this was a good buy or not. Uh, the reason I buy Chico's is because it sells great for me in my eBay store. Chico, Chico's does vanity sizing, sizing. I've heard it called novelty sizing and I've heard it called vanity sizing. I don't know. I think I hear vanity more often though. So vanity sizing. This is an older Chico's tag too. That's why I'm saying I don't know if it was a great pickup, but uh, tell me what you think. Size three means it's an XL. I got this because it's a, an XL. Size three does the best for me. Chico's does great for me on eBay. And I loved that it's a corduroy shirt, a very light corduroy button down shirt, but look at the print. It's Asian, Asian inspired. It's got geishas on it and Japanese writing or something. I just thought it was really pretty and special, but it is an older piece. It's made really well. It's got zip pockets, but I don't know. I'm thinking I'll put it up for $24.99 and hope to get $20 on eBay. I don't think I got anything else Chico's or I'd show you a newer tag, but it's still my, one of my number ones. One of the best sellers for me on eBay. More men's stuff. So this is the North Face men's size large. Tell me if you know what these are, you guys. These are shorts. They look huge. It says large, but they look huge to me. They have like a 2XL or something. They're cargo black shorts, but they just have so much going on. It has this Velcro sides and these built-in shorts. Never stop exploring. Are they padded? Yeah, built-in padded shorts. Oh, I wonder if these are for like um, mountain biking. I'm gonna have to do a little research. And they've got this, um, there's the North Face logo, zipper pockets. They're really awesome. They're rich black color in good shape. Mesh pockets. Well, I don't know. I'll have to do a little research on what those are about, but they're super nice. Just in case you don't know, if you happen to be new to reselling, you cannot put the word Velcro in your listing. So these, I would love to be able to put Velcro waistband or something, but you can't use the word Velcro. It's trademarked. They, they can remove your listing. For putting the word velcro in there this is another line by chico's so i'll put this in my ebay store this is zenergy it's like their sporty line this is a size two so it's a large and this is just a zip front jacket top with some pretty print and it's sort of glittery i don't know i'll put it up for 24.99 with best offer i sell almost everything with best offer. How do you guys do with this brand? It's a young brand. I got this because it was new with tags. It's Maurice's. I think it's a mall brand. And I think it has a pretty good following. This is new with tags. It was on sale for 39. Gosh, it must be expensive there. I just thought this was a cute pink glittery sweater. Maybe that'll go on posh because it's kind of a younger mall brand, I believe. This I got, I gotta clean up this tag. I got because I like it, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. Do you ever have that where it's like, what is this? So this is BKE, the buckle. Gosh, I have to, I'll take scissors and just clean up. This must have gone in the wash and the label is peeling off. BKE, which is sold at the buckle, which is like a trendy store. This is like a jacket. But um, I must be women's because it's a size large. Yeah, there's no way this is a man's large. But it's very distressed. It almost looks like um, acid wash, stone wash. It has all this cool stitching detail. I don't know. I figured I'd give it a try at the bins. It's heavy, so I probably paid $1.79, $2 for it. I kind of like it. What do you think?
I like it. I'll give it a try. I'll see whether it does better on Posh or eBay. Almost done with this first bag. I'll end the haul here. I'm going to try and insert, um, I'll end the haul when I finish this bag. I have three pairs of shoes to show you in this dress. Um, I'm going to try, I'm learning to use this video software. I'm going to try to insert some pictures of the bins of my haul. I'd love to hear from you in the comments about your experience with the bins. Um, this is not an exhaustive list at all of things to consider about whether going to the Goodwill Outlet slash bins. But if you want to leave a comment with something that you think is important to let people know about, please do. That would be great. I bought this dress because it was new with tags. It's American Rag, sold at places like Macy's. I think it's a Junior's. It's a size extra small. Or it was originally $49. And it's just a long maxi dress and a fun striped print. I do not love photographing maxi dresses because they're so long. I find it difficult to get a good picture because if you get the entire length then your picture is so far away it's hard to see the item. So I don't I don't love photographing them, but I think women really love maxi dresses in the summer. They're so comfy and flattering. So I'll probably put this on posh, probably about 20 bucks. Okay, I got three pairs of shoes. Let me just say, um, well, you'll have to check out my other videos. I have a love-hate relationship with shoes. Right now, what I'm trying for me in my own business is to know myself and what my obstacles are, what my pitfalls are, because I am not someone who loves to clean, polish, uh, repair shoes. At least not right now. Some people love doing that, like it's enjoyable for them. I find that I'll have a pile of shoes and I'm like, these need a little work. They just need to be polished. They just need the bottoms cleaned. And I don't do it, so they kind of build up. However, shoes, I love shoes personally, and shoes sell well. Shoes are expensive. And so I think people look to places like eBay and Posh to get a good deal on shoes. I just sold a pair on um, eBay for $40, my Born Black Gladiator sandals. I had two similar pair, and for some reason I just didn't wear this one. So I put them on there. They paid, I think I had them on $39.99. They offered me $35, plus they paid $8 for shipping. People love shoes. I just am not so good at, at doing the work of shoes. So I'm trying right now to just buy shoes that don't need a lot of work, that need zero to no work. So um, we'll see how I did. There were so many shoes there. I hope I can pop in a picture or video for you guys to see. I mean, it's crazy. The brand on these is Sanook. S Sanook. Can you see that? This video is getting long. No.